Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Hi, this is Pottery Shorts. I'm Phil Bernberg, and this topic is three tips for using a triple beam balance. And I have here in front of me, this is a, a, a typical triple beam balance. This is the platform, and in case you're not familiar with it, I just want to sort of point out the features, because a lot of people have gone over to digital, digital balances or digital scales, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with this kind of balance, especially because it doesn't need any batteries or it doesn't need any power, and you get very good precision out of it, actually, which we'll talk about. So this is the, this is the platform where the, the, the samples are put, and these are the three, it's called a triple beam because these are the three beams or the three slides that have the counterweights. By the way, in case you've ever heard of the term poise, these counterweights are also called poises. So these are where you slide the weights along to balance out the whatever is on the platform. And then there's the zero, the pointer which points to zero. And finally, underneath here, there's a, there's a knurled knob which we'll talk about for a minute. And these, also, these two little posts, there's a post here and there's a post here, those are for hanging extra weights on, extra counterweights on. The capacity of this scale by itself is about 610 grams, one pound, two ounces. And if you were to put on the extra two, which you can purchase separately, two extra counterweights that hang on those little posts, the capacity goes up to 2,610 grams, or five pounds and two ounces. And the sensitivity of this particular scale is a tenth of a gram, which is very good. That's, more, that's, that's adequate for just about any weighing we would be doing for pottery. So the first tip, I guess, is before weighing, make sure that the, the scale goes to zero when it's empty. That can be affected by just dirt on, if there's dirt sitting on the arm of the scale or dirt on the platform, or even if, if it's something has shifted a little bit. So the first thing is to check to make sure that it actually goes to zero when it's empty. And that's where this knurled knob under here comes into play. This is for balancing out the scale. Because in case, let's say some paint got chipped off of here, well that would actually change the weight. Or if there's something that was stuck to the pan, that would change the way it was reading. So this little knurled knob under here, is on a threaded rod and you can screw it in or out to balance the, the scale. So that you can use that to adjust the zero and make sure that when it's empty, it really does read zero. That's the most important thing. Check that before you do any weighing. On some balances, there's a fourth beam right here behind the other, behind the other, the other three beams, there's a fourth beam or a fourth arm with a single large sliding weight. And this is the large sliding weight right here. And this is the tear beam. Not all scales have it. It's an additional feature that costs a little extra when you buy the scale. But the sliding weight is used to balance out the weight of an empty container on the pan. So if I'm doing a lot of re repetitive measurements and I, and I don't want to have to subtract, the when I, when I weigh something in the pan, I have to subtract the weight of the pan out of the total weight. If I don't want to have to do that, I can use this tear weight to balance out the weight of the pan, and then every time I weigh, I'm just weighing the material in it. And the way you'd use this is, you can this, this large weight slides, you put the, you put the container on the, on the platform, and then this, you can slide this large weight to the location, the proximal location, and then you can turn it and twist it, because it also screws in and out very slightly to do sort of the final adjustment. So I can do this in order to balance out the weight of the container. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And consider becoming a patron of our channel. Visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Okay, and I guess the third and final tip here, which I think is really the most important is, actually, as it turns out, the best way to actually read the weight when you're weighing something is not to just allow the, 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 pan, the, the indicator to go to zero. It's a, the, the most, a more accurate way is to actually 
let the arm, let it swing like this and watch the swing and, and look for an equal swing above and below zero. And the reason why they say that is, especially when you're weighing small amounts, it's possible, especially as the scale gets older, if there's a little bit of dust on the, there's a pivot point in here or several pivot points that the scale is balancing on. And if you get dust or, or a little corrosion or something on the pivot points, sometimes it can stick. So if you're letting it just go to zero, there isn't, it could be sticking, in fact, and not at, be, actually be at zero, where if it's swinging equally on both sides of the zero, then you know you're getting perfectly balanced. So I found this is an especially useful technique when you're weighing small amounts of weight. Well, there isn't much, there isn't much to make the, the pan and the arms move. It, it's more helpful to just let it swing and watch the swing go back and forth. And when you've, when you've got it balanced, the swing above and below the zero will be equal. By the way, I didn't mention earlier on, this is also a magnetic, there's a magnetic damper in here. There's a magnet in here, and this arm is made out of aluminum. And as the arm moves through the, the magnetic field from the magnet, it actually slows down so it doesn't keep damping, it doesn't keep swinging forever. So you don't have to wait a long time to, to watch the swing. When you get it to the point where it's, it goes up about the same number of sort of marks on the scale with the same distance and the same blow, that's it, you're balanced. You don't have to wait for it to come to rest. Well, anyway, I hope this has been useful. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also, check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable.